Hello, my name is Ryan Runcie, and this is Runcie Studios, an artist safe space and art haven. Today is a continuation of the clientele series. Today I'm going to be talking about working with nonprofits, um, you know, smaller organizations that usually are doing good work in the community or might be working on something very specific to their heart that they have grown. Um, a following around of people that want to help that uh, that cause, whether it's breast cancer, whether it's artist awareness, whether it's uh, children's education. There's a hundred different nonprofits that you're aware of. But as an artist, we have the cool fortune of working with nonprofits, both for free and for pay. When I say for free, I mean more working out of your passion or you want to support a really good cause. For me personally, I've been able to do free murals for nonprofits that helped me improve my career and grow my outreach. And I wanted to see them uplifted. So I was able to use my skill and give back to them and work with younger, um, younger artists and teach them the ropes and show them how to set up shows and do these things through nonprofits that helped me. So, um, you know, like I said, a lot of these things can be very mutual. And you want to look at clients as people and how people can help each other is basically what business is. Um, you know, you help me, I help you. And we just use money to exchange just so that you can also buy food while you're helping me, right? So these transactions or the ways that they pay you can also be very wide variety. Um, every organization has a different avenue to money. Some have great uh, fundraising abilities. Some get great resources from cities. Some nonprofits have excellent grant writers and can get three to four different grants a year for different projects. Um, and the bigger organizations get, they're able to utilize all of these at the same time. So don't discredit an organization because they're called a nonprofit. There's still money that has to move through their organization in order to get their work done. And that involves hiring artists to do artistic things. Artists just aren't a free part of the equation um, and they pay for everything else. So just know, yes, it is cool to donate your time and to be very considerate of uplifting things that you believe in. But do know that when you're not making money and your business is art, then you're losing a lot of time and you're losing a lot of profit. Um, so just be aware of that. In terms of time span, this is a pretty wide variety, but I would say that nonprofits usually have much shorter time scales than uh, commercial work. Usually they know the time period they want to get it done. Um, like I said, they use grants and often grants have termination clauses. Like you have 18 months to execute this project and write up the uh, briefing about how it went and all the numbers, etc. And you have to have it filed by a, a certain date or you will have to return the money that was given to you so you don't want to fall into this trap of writing this excellent grant working with this nonprofit that you're gonna do something and they pay you two five ten thousand dollars to get it done and you don't realize that you didn't do enough due, due diligence to prep for the project and you're not able to complete it in time you'll have to find that money to give back to them. Um, so just be really aware of what you're getting yourself into in these kind of situations. But know that nonprofit work is just as lucrative as commercial work. And they also usually have very succinct ideas of what they want the work to be. Um, so that just kind of falls under our next part, which is expectations and boundaries expectations are what the client expects you to complete boundaries 
are the expectations you have of your client. Um, for this kind of work, nonprofit work, I think this is where your boundaries need to be the strongest. Like I said, they are nonprofits, so naturally they have very passionate people working for them. They have very talented fundraisers and just know when you have a topic that is very heartfelt, um, passionate salespeople and like a, a meeting point where you both uh, see the world the same way, it's much easier for them to try and negotiate you down and you to feel obligated to take that because you know it's going to a quote unquote good cause. But if this good cause always strips other people down in order to get where they're going, I mean, you have to kind of analyze their business practice and see if you want to fall into that. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely where I think you really need to have solid boundaries. Let them know what you're willing to do. If you have a price, what it is, how much time you're willing to work with them. And often... Um, unless it's through grants or things like that, there's just no contracts that fall into place because of how loose things end up being. Um, for me, for the most part, I've done contracts with nonprofits, but again, because of the way some of them operate, they are solid in some areas like grant writing or city related uh, meetings and town hall meetings, but they're just not the best with their paperwork or keeping their filings in order. So you're going to run into a myriad of nonprofits, but take advantage of it um, to grow your career and grow your network and see what meaningful topics you want to use your art to support and bring voice to. That's probably the most important thing we get to do as artists so don't don't uh, take these opportunities lightly um so i'm going to go into negotiation differences which we kind of touched on here but uh, for the most part it's a very soft negotiation um, there's never any hard hard words thrown around there's never any Anything but positivity, really, because they came to you for a reason. They knew your work aligned with their mission a lot of the times. And you feel that way almost instantly when you, you talk to them. A lot of the time you might already be following this organization or you're aware of them. And again, that's kind of why they're reaching out to you is that you both just align really well. And they have a project where they want to hire an artist. So with that good fortune, you know, feel free to move into that. Maybe if you think this is a group that you see a lot of future work with, and this could be a 10-year thing, maybe a discount for 10 years of retainer work um, is something that you want to try and negotiate. So they put you on retainer, keep you around, and they just can always call on you for the next project. And you get like a nice monthly payment or quarterly payment, whatever you negotiate. But just think about different ways you can um, really make it mutual and a fun experience for people on both sides. So that's it for this one, you guys. I appreciate you listening once again. If you liked it, feel free to click that button down below. Subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. But... If you didn't like it, if you didn't find this worth your while, that's cool too. Until next time, take care.